Hi, I'm Rachel here with my cat Leia and I'm here to do a tag video. This is the Muppet Tag. This tag was created by Bridget Reeds and I was tagged by Steve Donahue. I'll leave links to their videos down below. To be honest, I didn't really start this channel to do a lot of tag videos. I've actually sort of been stealing and adapting tags from BookTube for a while and adding them to my monthly literary newsletters on my blog. I'll leave a link to that down below too. But I'm also very interested in interacting with the community and I was tagged, so I thought maybe I should give this a go in a more traditional way. I've talked about a lot of these books recently, but because I wanted to choose from what's on my shelf and not take a lot of time with fancy editing, I'm gonna talk about them again. I got some reading to get back to. So the first question is The Swedish Chef, a book that looked great but left a bad taste in your mouth. I chose Here Be Dragons, Tales of Dragon Con. Several years ago, for a couple of years, I attended the Dragon Con Science Fiction and Fantasy Convention in Atlanta. I had such a great time, and I've been nostalgic ever since. I thought this book would quench my thirst, but it was so bad. <laughs> These are SFF authors who basically phoned in speculative stories taking place around the con. The characters are stereotypes, and the world building is mostly dumb, and all of the stories were pretty badly written, or at least almost all of them. Also badly edited, there were some basic, glaring grammar mistakes all the way through. I really should get rid of it, but I scribbled in some notes. Mostly not great things. Second question involves Fozzie Bear. Name a book you couldn't help but laugh at. I have a deep interest in Jewish literature, and this broad story means so much to me that I'm going with The Tevye the Dairyman Stories by Sholem Alechem. Most people know these stories better via their musical adaptation, Fiddler on the Roof. But Alechem was a popular Yiddish playwright and storyteller a little over a century back. I personally see the Tevye character as a bit of the Shlemiel, the Yiddish word for a foolish sort of dreamer who sort of dooms himself. <laughs> Though perhaps scholars would contest me about all of this. <laughs> the Shlemiel is often a point of humor in Yiddish literature, and so is Tevye. The scholar Hillel Halkin wrote this about Tevye in my introduction. Alone in his village without a Jew to speak to, without a synagogue to go to, without a God to be spoken to by, he must carry on the dialogue of Job all by himself, now being Tevye demanding to know what he has been punished for, now being his comforters patiently explaining that, that whatever God does is for the best, and now being God himself threatening to blow him over little Tevye away with a puff of his breath if he does not stop his tiresome complaining. All around him, the world is as silent as the forest in which he has his deepest thoughts. There is not a consoling word. Man says nothing. God says nothing. The Messiah is a policeman with an eviction notice. And Tevye, who will not take nothing for an answer, goes on arguing with them all. <laughs> it's sort of a specific to Judaism, comic tragedy sort of humor. <laughs> Next, we have my boys, Honeydew and Beaker. Name a book that left you feeling a bit smarter. I figure it's a good time to dip into some nonfiction, but I'm sticking as close to fiction as I can with The Bronte Myth by Lucasta Miller. This might be my favorite book of the month. And I'm finally doing what I should have done years ago, reading up on Charlotte, Emily, and Anne. I adored Jane Eyre and Wuthering Heights as a teenager, and now I'm adding The Tenet of Wildfell Hall to that list. But I never really did a comprehensive study into the lives of the Bronte sisters. This book isn't just about where and when and why the Brontes were writing, it also delves into popular opinion for the last 150 years, and the various ways that these novels have been interpreted. I'll always love the books just for being the books, but it's a pretty powerful to know the larger picture, too. Then there's Crazy Harry, a book or a character who drove you crazy. I'm going with Faithful by Alice Hoffman. I had to read this for book club, and I was really looking forward to it. Hoffman's The Dove Keepers was my favorite read of 2015. And the first few chapters of this book really engrossed me, but then we kind of went off the rails. Or, more accurately, the story sped up and basically reported the plot back to us. It involves a young woman who is in a tragic car accident with a friend who goes into a coma. But most of the book is about the protagonist's healing, as it were, throughout the next decade. I really didn't connect to any of it or to any of the other characters. I kind of wonder if Hoffman is just better at historical fiction. I own another one of her books that takes place in the early 20th century, so I guess I'll find out. Next is Janice, an easy read. 
Since this is middle grade, I decided to go for six books. This is the Rebecca American Girl series. This is her official image, or her first official image on this side. And on this side, she's lighting Hanukkah candles! <laughs> Like most American girls born in the 1980s, I grew up surrounded by the American Girls historical dolls. So imagine my glee in 2009 when they finally introduced the first Jewish doll. I bought all of the books, obviously. In these stories, Rebecca lights Shabbat candles and celebrates her brother's bar mitzvah and even stands up to her non-Jewish class and teacher about how no, not everyone celebrates Christmas. Also, because these books take place in 1917, her cousin's family escapes from the Russian pogroms and comes to live with them in New York, and Rebecca gets to act in one of the first movie pictures and speak out against the injustice of factory work. Oh, those plucky American girls. Finally, good old Slater and Waldorf, a book or series whose TV or film adaptation was disappointing. I'm going to go the extremely controversial route and say Game of Thrones and I'll immediately perjure myself because I mostly like the show. There's even some parts I think it does better than the books. But I've enjoyed these last three seasons more than the first three, in part because of how the show handled Catelyn Stark and the Tullys. On the show, the Tullys are barely around except to be hapless doofuses. And Catelyn went back and forth between wanting to slink away home and wanting to wreak holy vengeance on her enemies. She was such a fascinating character in the books because she was one of the only people who wanted to call for peace. And then she actively stayed with Rob and helped him with his diplomatic missions, or even suggested them, rather than hide away like, like all of the dude folk wanted her to. She was a far more complicated character than Michelle Fairley made her out to be, not to throw shade at on Miss Fairley. <laughs> It's just, I saw a preview for The White Princess on Stars that's starting up soon, and it seems like Fairley's playing the same sort of vengeful character. Oi. In other news, maybe I should read some Philippa Gregory. There's so much to read. As for who I tag, I'm such a small fry over here on Booktooth that I'm not even sure who watches me. I'd really love to see anyone who's watching this do this tag, particularly other small fries like me, because then I can go to your channel and show you some love. That's about it for now. Thanks so much to Steve for tagging me, and thank you all for watching. I'll see you next time.